So, Chris Dawson, welcome to uh, my podcast studio at the Hacienda. What do you think of uh, what I got set up here? Well done. <laughs> Not bad, eh? The newspaper guys, uh, 2020, gotten into 2020. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Looks I great. Picked up a cell phone three years ago for the first time. Then I got into <laughs> this video stuff. So you're with the, the Voodoos, and they're doing really well this year. Tell me a bit about this season, and what number season is it? Six. This is the sixth season. Wow. So, yeah, we're... Uh, we're approaching uh, win number 40, which would be our uh, fourth uh, fourth 40 win season in six years. So uh, it's uh, it's been a very good year this year. One of the, I would have to say this off season probably is one of the ones where everything really came into place. All the things, well, you know, we'd really like this guy. We'd really like this guy. But usually you get like maybe one of the five guys you want. And really the way it worked, like Parker Bowman, uh, you know, getting released from Ramuski and, and, you know, maybe thinking about going and playing in the Ontario League, but, uh, you know, um, decided to come back here. You know, uh, Gregory Trudeau Paquette had a, had a kind of a crappy ending of the year with, uh, with uh, with the Kirkland Lake Gold Miners last year, and uh, and ex had it expressed some interest in in getting traded, and and we had an opportunity to talk to him, and we convinced Greg to come here, and Greg's having a great year. He's almost you know eclipsed the seventy point mark, which is the most he's had ever in a year. So um, you know those two guys were were uh, were big pieces, and you know just some other guys have been stepping up, like Seiji Martoni was was maybe a bottom six forward last year. Now he's you know a recent player of the week, and he's uh, um, you know, excelling this year, playing over a point a game, and and Thomas Yachmanev uh, wanted to try the Ottawa League. Uh, things didn't work out there, but uh, he came back here, and and he, and he's having a really good year. So you know, a lot of things are really come into place. Another guy we got traded in the summer, we got at the trade deadline was Eric Allaire, and our blue line probably could have used some toughness, and uh, we ended up getting uh, Eric near the deadline, and then uh, our our second last acquisition would have was uh, was uh, Jack Craycroft, and we got him as a free agent from Flint Flon, and he's playing with Jacob Peterson Galima, and he he's that big uh, big uh, steady puck moving defenseman that has a right hand shot that we were looking for most of the year, so we got pretty lucky there. And and then I, our last pickup was uh, Christian Chichigoy coming back and getting cut from the battalion, and and uh, you know, and I should be ashamed of myself not saying it. I mean, we had uh, in terms of pieces falling into place. Owen Say, our goalie, was on uh, Team Canada East this year. He came in on a tryout, Dave. Came hmm. in a tryout. We had two goalies signed. He came in. He played junior B down in. Uh, uh, down the GOJHL last year, and he, he came up for a tryout. He said, "Well, give me an opportunity, and we'll see where it goes." And he looked so good in camp, and he really hasn't stopped. You know, he right was uh, he's been the goalie of the month for for three months in the NOJHL, and you know he's getting a lot of NCAA teams knocking on his door. So you know, there was another guy kind of fell on our lap, and already, so so we were really fortunate that way. It was a very good recruiting year, which is kind of I think part of the reason why we're seeing as much. Uh, you know, success this year. So it's all luck, eh? It's all luck, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's this team uh, compared to your championship team uh, a couple of years ago? Oh boy, that's a tough one, right? Oh. Uh, I think that we probably had a more well-rounded uh, forward group, uh, meaning more uh, players that could play roles. I think this team has more scoring. Um, but I do. I, I don't think that I, I've ever had a blue. We've had a blue line as good as this. And then now you factor in, you know, Owen Say putting up arguably, you know, the best numbers of any goalie in a Voodoo's uniform. And then you have Christian, no, wait, uh, Christian Chichigoy, who's our all-time winningest goalie, is the other goalie. So I mean, you know, our our depth in goal is 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 fantastic. Our uh, our defense is very deep. And uh, and our forward core can score. Um, so yeah, I, I just think maybe maybe just the you know do we have enough of, uh, of the edge to be as good as that team? But do I think we have a chance to to win an NOJHL title and go on to Dudley? Absolutely. Who's giving you the 
biggest challenge in the league? Definitely Timmins. Timmins is really he really uh, has, has, has running another really good program. They have a really good coach in Corey Beer, who also was with uh, with Team Canada East this uh, this past fall. Um, they've got a lot of big heavy players. They've got an older team, um, and they have a goalie who likes beating us too because he uh, we, we let uh, we traded Tyler Masternak, and he ended up two years ago back on the back with Timmins, and uh, so he always brings his A game when when they play us. So they, they are they definitely are a team that uh, team to be reckoned with, and I mean we certainly would like to. Uh, um, finish first so we don't have to play Hurst because Mark LaFleur always seems to find some playoff magic whether he's with Kirkland Lake or, or Hurst and of course they're the defending champions so we really would hope to finish first and not have to face Hurst in the, in the, in the opening round. How many more games? Uh, probably, I think probably we're talking about 12, uh, 12 or 14 games left uh, and it ends on March 1st. So, so this is uh, February 4th um, when do you play Timmins next? Here, uh, th- here, here on the. Uh, I think it's pretty close to. It's not Valentine's Day. It is. It might be Valentine's Day. Yeah, oh, I think it's a on the bit of February fourteenth. Romance between the Voodoo's and the Rocks. So, oh, that'd be cool. I might come out for a game. I there haven't yet. Uh, it's. Uh, it's not really in my. Uh, no one's paying me to come out there <laughs> yes. anymore. So screw it. <laughs> but uh, well, I don't. I do want to see the boys play. Uh, a bunch of local guys. Let's talk about the local guys on the team. Okay. Um, right down the list. Uh, well, we'll start alphabetically. Eric Allaire. Yeah. Uh, Eric is uh, Eric's a kid who uh, who's really been with the team. If you remember back in, uh, well, I, remember. I remember he scored his first goal. I think in uh, in Mattawa, uh, his first junior A goal as an AP when he was playing with the Trappers in his. The, with the minor, as a minor midget playing uh, playing up with us because that year we used a lot of uh, we used a lot of affiliate players. So Eric's been around off and on basically since the beginning of the program. So you know, I've, seen, have, I've seen him kind of grow up there. Uh, uh, minor baseball is when I first met him, uh, and he was a pretty good ball player, really good pitcher. Yeah, yeah. and uh, can grow a full beard. And, and arguably last year when he had his beard, some people were thinking he looked older than Coach Max. Yeah, yeah, no, he uh, he can uh, certainly do the lumberjack stuff. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, you know, he he's uh, he's really amped his game up the last uh, the last uh, the last few games. And uh, like I said, we're really excited to have have him back. So uh, some of the other uh, other players, we got Eric Mondu, mm-hmm. another guy who played with us two years ago. Decided to go. Uh, he was trying to make Hamilton, uh, so he played on their affiliate team last year, the the Kilty Bees, and decided to come home this year. So he's been a really good uh, uh, reacquisition. Much How's like he doing it. this year? Doing well. I mean, he's good power play, moves the puck really well, sees the ice really well, and uh, you know, I think uh, a big part of our power play, which has been really good. I, I think this probably is the best power play we've had uh, since we've been around. So. Um, Jacob Peterson Glima, yep. uh, steady guy back there. Doesn't say much of it with his with his uh, voice, but does a lot with his game. He's mm-hmm. consistent. He he works hard. He does his job, and uh, you know we really really like uh, yeah, he's a like good kid. his his progress too. Um, uh, Joe Witted, another he. There's another kid who played uh, an affiliate game that same mm-hmm. year with my with Eric in the in the uh, original year. Another 20 year old local kid, uh, great shot, yeah. and uh, he's he's been coming on a little bit more. He's had a couple injuries that uh, he's had to deal with, but uh, uh, Joe's uh, Joe's another one you'd know through baseball as yep. well, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, good kid. Uh, got leadership qualities, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you'd have uh, Ryan Mills. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Millsy. Another he's uh, plug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He played baseball too yeah, at yeah. West Ferris for a bit, and uh, uh, yeah. So I mean, we we've had uh, a lot of multi pull uh, multi sports athletes. You're talking about here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eric was a good ball player. Al uh, Mondu and uh, Alaire. Yes, uh, Eric played uh, played Algonquin, right? Yeah, yeah. And he was a good Stingers player too. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, so we got uh, Alaire Mondu. Um, Ryan Mills, Joe Wittet, who else? Galima. Galima. And then I guess Thomas Yatchman, if you could kind of call us a local, being the fact that he, he has a beautiful house next door to my, uh, right next door to my brother-in-law on, yeah. on uh, Silver Lady. You know, well, his so, dad played for the Centennial, yeah. big star, big yeah. NHL star. Talk about his, uh, does he help you guys at all? 
uh, Vitali. Yeah. Well, he helped the the one uh, the one year he was on the bench yeah. at the at the end of the year as a, as a coach. Uh, working in the KHL this year. So oh, okay. We, right. we I just talked to him for off and on, but uh, um, Thomas's game has really progressed in the second half of the year. He's he's probably the best shot, and you probably wouldn't th- think of this as Vitali, but probably the best shot blocking uh, penalty killer. Uh, on our team and maybe in the whole league, he has become. Well, and, a, and he's dangerous when you're shorthanded. Oh, like he, I, absolutely! I, I thought I saw like an action clip of him scoring just not too long ago. Uh, he uh, he did a spinorama, yeah. uh, a spinorama bat behind the back. Yeah, he knocked the uh, puck past, out of the guy, uh, deflect yeah. the puck away, and then came in and did a between the legs. Uh, uh, Matthew Kachuk type or Merrick yeah. Malik, I guess, would be the first one who did yeah, it. Yeah, that was that was pretty so, good. Yeah, it was. Uh, he was. Uh, he's he can been score at almost any time. He right. can. He's got a. He's got a, a. So much talent and vision. I mean, the the only thing that's keeping him right now, maybe from from a lot of D, Division One schools, is maybe his skating. But I know he's he's working on that, and he is only nineteen years old. So you know, you never know. Yeah. Well, it's amazing though when you see his uh, like the, the clips of him actually, you know, stealing a puck, going in. He, he picks up a lot of speed. He's faster than a lot of guys, but it's. Uh, I guess the, it, you got to have better skating, right? Yeah, but you know what? Like I said, he he's, he does all the right things. He's yeah. he's a good. Uh, um, he's become a real good two hundred foot player and and can play a lot of roles. And uh, you know, so you never know. You never know. I mean, uh, he's obviously got opportunities with his uh, having a Russian American Canadian passport. He can. Uh, he really has all sorts of opportunities to play professionally in Europe, go to school in the U.S. Uh, or you know. He's got all three passwords? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Born in Nashville. Grew up playing all his minor hockey and everything with uh, in, in Russia. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then came over here. We had to do a complicated IHF uh, transfer to get him over here in the first place. So Because he came here as a 17-year-old. Went to Whittafield. And uh, it was funny. We had didn't really have a lot of uh, quality ice time to see how good he would be. So... Um, I was talking to Guy a lot, and Guy was coaching the major midgets back then, and and was saying, well, you know, if you don't want v- Thomas, you know, he'd really good good in trap for red, white, and blue, and uh, you know, we I saw him on a couple of John Couch's skates, which was like a D camp, and and went to, he he showed some of his skills doing goalie school stuff, and um, but once he got to camp, he he kind of showed that he belonged in in in, uh, in junior A and. Uh, I kind of disappointed Key with that one because he would have loved to have uh, yeah, Thomas no Yatsmanev on his team that year. Yeah, so. for sure. You know, he nice. missed one. Eh? I, I don't want to. Matt Hardwick. We didn't talk about Matt with the Vilnius oh. either. Oh, okay. Well, so there's another. Yeah, there's yeah, another yeah, one yeah, that, for sure. He's there. Yeah, yeah. So but, another uh, multi-sport athlete. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've yeah. seen him on the football field, baseball field, hockey. Hardy, yeah. big physical guy.